right, hello and welcome to this long-awaited video here at the Museum Modeler channel. I say long-awaited because today we are finally going to crack the box on Academy's 1700 scale USS Enterprise CV-6. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I might have a slight obsession with Yorktown-class aircraft carriers. I think that they were not only instrumental, of course, in the first year of the Pacific War, but I think they were a beautifully designed ship. These were three ships, of course, uh, Yorktown, Enterprise, and Hornet, that held the line in the Pacific during the first full year of the war, and one by one they fell until only Enterprise was left. And what Academy has done is filled a very important niche in the hobby by giving us the first 1700 scale injection molded kit of Enterprise that's been on the market for more than 30 years. The very last one that we saw new was the much maligned Tamiya Enterprise kit. Uh, it was good for its time, I guess, but a replacement has been incredibly long overdue. We have Academy's kit. There's a new one from Trumpeter coming out soon as well, which uh, there's no details on it yet, but it is forthcoming, I hope. So it's a good time to be a fan of the Yorktown class. And that's why we're going to open up this box and take a look at what Academy has provided for us. All right, first it's important to note that this is what Academy is calling the Modeler's Edition of this set. Um, it comes with photo etch, a simple photo etch set at least, and some paint masks. The standard edition does not come with these pieces. It'll therefore be a little bit cheaper. Uh, I don't know the price point on that. This kit was only $33 though, so wonderful value. Uh, box art, you've got what looks to be uh, seen from Battle of the Eastern Solomons, I guess, with the smoke coming from the rear quarter of Enterprise here, but you can't very well model that uh, exact scene, and I'll explain more of that as we look at the actual frets. Okay, so box art removed, and here's what you have inside the box. Now, I did go ahead and open this earlier so that I could make some notes and get a good understanding of what it is that we're looking at. Also, now that I've got the shiny box art out of the way, I'm going to kick on this overhead light so that we can see the frets in a little bit more detail. All right, we'll start with the hull. This bag has your waterline hull in it. Now, a lot of people have wondered about the shape of the hull, and I took a look at it with some uh, scaled uh, shape drawings of it, and this is a much better representation of the hull than what Trumpeter provided with their uh, USS Hornet CV-8 kit a couple of years ago. It's much more of the quote-unquote coke bottle shape hull, much more graceful than you saw with Trumpeter's offering. Now that said, the actual shape of the prow is a little bit less um, sharp than it would be on the actual ship on the actual Enterprise prow cut in much more sharply than you have here. It's a pretty minor difference though, honestly. Now the scale of it is wonderful compared to other kits out there of, uh, well Tamiya's kit rather at least, of the ship. Uh, I'm going to spit out a bunch of numbers here just to prove to you that the numbers are there, but end of the day, this is a very accurately scaled kit. On the actual Enterprise, uh, her hull length was 770 feet. On this kit, it scales out to 765 feet, so it's a five foot difference. Enterprise's hull width was 83 feet. On this kit, it's 80 scale feet, so a three scale foot difference. Her flight deck length was 802 feet. On this kit, it is 805 feet, three foot difference. Her flight deck width is 109 feet. On this kit, it's 107 feet, so two feet difference. And a point of much contention that we'll look at in a few minutes is the island that this kit comes with. The actual Enterprise, the island was 37.4 feet wide. On this kit, the island is 36.75 scale feet wide. So less than a foot width difference than on the actual ship. This is one incredibly closely scaled ship at 1700. Okay, you have closed hangar doors. In fact, all of the hangar doors on this kit are closed. Opening them may be an issue. The waterline component of the ship is a bit misleading because there is this ridge that you see underneath the hull where the upper hull would attach to the lower hull. That ridge will have to be sanded away if you want to lay this flat on a sea base because otherwise you've got this 
nasty gap you can see there at the stern and again at the bow. And you'd have to clean that up. So you're best off just running this over some 400 grit sandpaper until that ridge is eliminated. Shape is nice though. Details are there. You have degaussing cable, um, which you don't normally see come molded on at this scale. And it's not overly extreme. Okay, also in this bag you have the lower portion of the hull. For those of you that want to do a full hull kit, there is this little notch cut out of it, which I gather is a remnant from the molding process. So the notch is actually on a separate sprue. You have to attach it. If that's how they you know, got away with having uh, sink marks or injector pin marks, then I mean, it's fine with me. Also in the sprue, you have, of course, your flight deck. Single piece molded with uh, elevators one and three cut out. Elevator two is molded in. There are no score marks on the back, so you are left with elevator two where it is, unless you want to do some fairly extreme surgery. I'll try to get this close enough to see the flight deck detail. I mean, it's it's pretty standard for 1700 scale. Uh, it's very comparable to what um, Trumpeter offered on their Hornet kit. You've got your tie downs, you've got your wood planks. I would hold out for a wood deck. I have no idea if Art Walks or Infini or anybody is going to offer one yet. They should, but there's not one on the market yet. You have an LSO platform in the right spot at the bow and at the stern, molded in. It's a little bit thick molding, but better than nothing, right? Okay. Oh, there is um, on the underside of the flight deck no detail, so there's no gallery deck detail or whatnot. Not to be expected, but still, you should know that it's not there. There are details included for the hangar deck, which comes in two pieces, which meet in the middle. This up here. Uh, it's a very simple just tread design but again it's better than nothing and they would meet there in the middle. It's curious that this was included however because there is no other internal hangar deck detail. <laughs> you know, you'll see when we look at the hangar deck walls there's nothing there. Also the fact that they included a number two elevator molded in the down position I find curious since the number two elevator is also molded in the up position. So it's not a negative, it's just a little bit odd. Okay, and with that, let's go on to the next set of bags. All right, now I'm going to open up a bag that contains fret B and a few other loose pieces. Let's go ahead and pull this out. Let's go ahead and get the loose pieces out of the way. A single piece slide molded island. At least the lower part of the island. This is a nice little, you know, detail. Normally you have to glue four to six sides together to make any sort of cube structure. So if this was slide molded is is nice. It has uh, nice door details. I mean, at least standard door details. The door details don't suck. Let's put it that way. Okay. And I saw this piece in the sprue shots at the beginning uh, when the kit was announced. Didn't know what it was. This is. Forward mounted, these are your officer's quarters uh, in the bow underneath the flight deck. So this side faces uh, the prow of the ship, this faces the rear, and the flight deck sits right on top of that. So that goes on the forecastle. And Spruby itself, what you have here are gun gallery lengths. The gun galleries are molded separately from the flight deck. I'm not sure precisely why. Maybe it was to include details on them like these fairly rudimentary but present. Um, gun gallery supports the angle brackets. I don't know, but they're here. You got to attach them to the flight deck separately. If you're painting things in stages, this might make painting a little bit easier. I don't know. Uh, forward and stern um, flight deck supports for underneath the bow and stern. You know, rudimentary molding, but again, it's better than blank plastic. And it does look better than what Trumpeter offered with their stock kit. All right, this is the roof of the pilot house, and based on this shape, we know that the kit is supposed to represent Enterprise before July 1942. In July 1942, after Midway, she was sent back to Pearl for basic refit and, you know, basically just repair. But one of the features that was added was a differently shaped pilot house roof with some extensions out on the side. So because of this, unless you want to scratch build it, your Enterprise will be no later than Battle of Midway. Okay, there's your um, flag bridge, 
extension for the front of the bridge, uh, boat crane for the starboard side of the island, and then there's your fort of the island right there. All right, let's take a look at the next set of frets. All right, this next bag contains two frets, fret F and fret E. By the way, you'll notice that the frets are numbered similar to the way that, you know, I think it's Meng uh, and Takeom do that with the way that they're cut in there. So at least it's clear. You don't have to worry about highlighting with a Sharpie. All right, so here on fret F, we have a couple of major components. You've got some hangar deck walls. Um, again, these have doors molded closed. Now, unlike on the actual hull, these you could cut open pretty easily with a razor saw and some patience. I might not worry too much about these with their very thin dividers, but the larger ones you could probably get away with. But again, on the back side, those hanger decks are blank. So scratch build, clean up those sink marks, have fun with it. If you're gonna open up the hanger deck, you are best off doing some modifications. Okay, here's your uh, conning tower for the island. Let me see if I can hold that away where you can see that the conning tower vision slits are actually molded in, which I really like that. It's a really nice little touch, if you can see that. Uh, okay, here's your 1.1 inch mounts um, with your angled clipping room there, search light towers for the side of the island, flight tech support brackets. Here's two of your 5 inch 38 gun galleries, another 20 millimeter gun gallery. Your island, again, slide molded. This is the top part of the island with the funnel, and you can see that there is that void cut into the front of the funnel. So it's a nice detail with the, um, the pilot house roof that I showed you a minute ago. It actually has that part that slots up vertically into that gap, but it doesn't fit in front of the gap perfectly, which is accurate. There was a bit of a void there, so that's good. Okay, uh, you got some utility boats. And... Yeah, that looks like about it. Oh, so you do have this boat, which was historically uh, on Enterprise's port quarter. It was a third boat forward. It was not present after March of 1942. So again, if you're looking for when you want to model this ship, because the uh, pilot house is shaped the way it is, you're looking at no later than July of 42. If this, if you put this on there, you're sticking yourself now to no later than March of 1942. Right? So you can do the, the Gilbert raids, you can do the, the Wake Island raid. You cannot do Midway, you cannot do Doolittle if you've got this in there. Of course, you could just leave it off and problem solved, but again, it's just a factor to remember. All right. And Sprue E is also in this bag. This has some more hangar decks with, again, the same lack of rear detail. You have your boat cranes. The lightning holes are molded but not punched through. That said, you could pretty easily punch through the rest of those with a pin vise. Here's the top of uh, your tripod mast right there with the windows molded, not cut, but some photo etch would fix that. The plastic CXAM1 radar, but you've also got a photo etch replacement that comes in the kit. The tripod mast has these horizontal supports. Those were not there in real life, so you'll need to cut them away. Boat crane, again, lightning holes that could be modified. Funnel caps. There are no photo etch replacements for those funnel caps included in the kit, so you'll need to get the Tom's model work set or another one if there's another one forthcoming and drill them out. They don't look bad for what they are. So they've at least got the accurate um, curve to them. You can see how they slope up, and that's that's historically correct. And then your Mark 33 um, rangefinders. At this point, Enterprise did not have the Mark 37s that you see on every other World War II ship. These are the Mark 33s. And some masts and a catwalk for underneath the flight deck in the stern. It's upside down in this view, though. All right, let's take a look at the next bags. All right, so these last two bags are repetitive to a large extent. What you have in this one here are two of fret D, and in this one you have two of fret D. So I'll only look at fret D once, but know that you get four of them. And then each bag also comes with a different colored sprue. This is part of Academy's whole multicolored plastic thing that they're doing for younger modelers to get them in the hobby. So if that's your thing, hey, look, you've got some colored 
frets. All right, so we'll start with fret D, which again, remember you get four of these, they're all identical. This is your air wing, first off. You have, here in the foreground, that's an SBD, then an F4, and then a TBD. The propellers are molded on, and you can see there's these protectors built into the fret to keep them in one piece. Detail is very simplistic. Landing gear is just these little plastic nubs, and there's virtually no surface detail on those aircraft. So if you're gonna use them stock, just be aware it's what you're getting. You have some of your 20 millimeter guns here. Uh, and again, if we're looking at dating the kit, 20 millimeter Orlikins were installed on Enterprise in March of 1942. So if you're going to be installing that boat dab that we looked at a minute ago, you can't use these Orlikins. You'll need to use some um, 50 caliber water-cooled Brownings. Um, and there's aftermarket ones of those that are out there. Um, Blue Ridge Models makes some good ones. But again, just know what you're doing, uh, what you're representing, at least I should say. If you use these, don't use that boat davit. Okay, there's some quad 1.1, 75 calibers. Uh, they're actually, you know, pretty good for injection molded. There's much better replacements out there, but those aren't awful. Utility boats. I like the way that these were done because the superstructure of them, for lack of a better term, is fully separate. So no need to worry about those unseemly paint lines, because if you know me, you know I hate painting ship's boats. They are the bane of my existence next to repetitive air wings. So um, this will make that a lot easier. Okay, flip you back over. Here's your 5-inch 38s. They're not terrible for injection molded, but again, there's much, much better replacements out there. And some searchlights, and then your um, elevator doors. Because you have four fret Ds, you have eight elevator doors, and you only need two of them. So here's a nice idea if you want to do a little 1700 scale diorama. You know, you see those flight deck bases for 172nd and 148 scale aircraft. Well, now you can do one in 1700th if you're feeling frisky. And in fact, I just noticed I have on my little shelf next to me here an old SBD that was left over from a Hornet build. So there you go. Of course, also next to that SBD is an F-35B, but now we're just getting silly, aren't we? All right, so this is fret D, and you have four of them. And then your last two colored frets, C. This is a waterline fret. You've got your propellers with these uh, guards around them, your shafts, rudder, and then this is that little notch that was cut out of the waterline hull we looked at earlier. And then fret E is all display stand. So black base, black plastic, black rods, I guess I guess stace, or stand base rods have a name, but I don't know what they are. So there's your rods. And that's all the plastic you get with this. So it's important to take a look at what era you're representing Enterprise and to do it accordingly. Your instructions are different from what you would normally see because it's a two-parter. They use so much paper, they had to print them, print steps one through 12, I think, on this half, and then the rest on this half. So take a look at it. It's very straightforward. It's what you get. I'm not gonna do a step-by-step -step walk through the instructions. I am just gonna point out, however, that one of the utility boats is, you are instructed here to attach it to a stern um, section here between these flight deck supports, this was eliminated from Enterprise um, in March of 42. I've seen no pictures of it after March of 42. This was instead um, life rafts, two stacks of life rafts. So if you're going to be doing midway, you're fine as long as you leave off this boat and then the one that you saw uh, in the port quarter with the attached davit. Those are the only changes you need to make to do an accurate midway Enterprise with this kit. Anything else, though, you got to take off the 20 millimeters and add 50 cal and do this, that, and the other. And if that's your thing, that's your thing. But as told, if you did everything that the instructions tell you to do, the only accurate enterprise that you could make would be for one fleeting moment during her refit in March of 42, when she still had this boat and still had the boat in the port quarter, but had already had her Orlikins attached. All right, so there's your directions. Again, it's in two parts. 
there's how you finish everything off. You also get a lovely photo etch guide that comes with this set because yes, there is attached photo etch. So let's take a look at that. All right, since this is the modeler's edition, you get this little extra bag in the set. This is your photo etch and this big yellow sheet are your paint masks. Look at the photo etch first because it's something you can actually see. The paint masks are difficult to see with the naked eye. I can only imagine how they're not going to show up on camera. It's a very rudimentary photo etch set, but what you get are, come on, focus. It's a little bit better, I guess. Let me try something with the light here. That's a little better. All right, so what you get are your railings. They're numbered, and those numbers correspond to this instruction artwork you get with uh, the ship. So you know exactly where each piece of railing goes. I mean, if you've never done photo etch before, I can see how that's convenient. I'll probably try to avail myself of it as well. It'll save me from snipping length after length after length of railing. So you get mostly railing. I do like the fact that this railing here, which um, goes along the ship's starboard side, amidships underneath the island, it does have a splinter shield section, which is where the orlicans go. So that's nice. Aside from your rails, you do have a CXAM-1 radar. Try the light again, because I'm really not feeling this focus. All right, so there's your radar. Um, you get a couple of inclined ladders, and that is it. So there's no funnel grills, uh, nothing else. This is a bit of a disappointment when I saw that Trumpeter is releasing with their CV-5 Yorktown kit in a few months. Its photo etch set includes a primary flight control for the island, as well as uh, the top of the foremast of the tower. You get a full photo etch detail for that as well, so you get to see you know, the windows and are not clearly molded. It's much more inclusive, at least as far as essential Yorktown class kits go. The Trumpeter photo etch set will be much more inclusive of the more distinctive features of the ship. This you could get basically in any 1-700 scale detail upset and get exactly what you're looking at here. But, I mean, like I said, it's it's included, so that's $8 you're not spending with, you know, Tom's Model Works or Gold Medal Models. All right, and this big yellow sheet is your masks. I guess you can kind of see that. This is nice for all the complex shapes of the, um, the catwalks, of the island roof, etc. You've got a full flight deck mask there so that you'll have clean lines between your vertical and horizontal surfaces. Saves you the trouble of having to cut that out with tape. Now are these perfectly sized and shaped? I do not know. I hope so, otherwise this is just a huge disappointing waste of time. And lastly you have a decal sheet. These are a little bit thick but standard. These Air wing decals can only be used if you're doing midway. If you're doing Coral C, if you're doing Doolittle, don't use these decals. Or you can use some of them, but not all of them, because the air wings at the time had a um, what was called a meatball. It's a red dot in the middle of the insignia. And they were being phased out at this time, and by midway, most of them had been removed. So that's what you're looking at here. If you use anything pre-June 42, you probably want to go with the meatball which is not included on this set. So again, if you build everything exactly as it is and leave off those two boats and include those decals, you can do midway. But just do your research before you dive in and know exactly which enterprise you want to build. You know, I'd mentioned earlier in this video why the island width was so you know significant that the fact that the Academy's enterprise has an accurately scaled island, that's because the Tamiya enterprise and the sprue here is from the 1970s Tamiya Enterprise kit. The Tamiya kit has been really notorious for having an island that is way, way too skinny, way too narrow. And I just want to highlight uh, one clear way of seeing that. It's actually the same piece. If you look at the pilot house roof here in Academy, okay, and this is the pilot house roof in Tamiya, look at the scale difference. I've got Tamiya on top, Academy underneath. Look at how much wider 
the Academy pieces than Tamiya. And the Academy piece is scaled accurately. So that Tamiya piece is 40% narrower than it needs to be. And that's why that island has never looked correct if you're building an Enterprise from Tamiya right out of the box. I'm going to keep this kit, obviously, because it has the name Enterprise on it and it's a Yorktown glass um, object, but I'm almost certainly never going to build it now. So at the end of the day, what do you say about this kit? Um, has Academy hit it out of the park with the most amazing 1700 scale ship ever? No. I mean, like every kit, this one has some issues. I'm really perturbed about the, the hangar deck doors and the lack of internal detail, yet the presence of a hangar deck floor. I'm not sure exactly what they were thinking there. But that being said, this is the best 1700 scale injection molded kit of USS Enterprise CV6 on the market. Now that could be obviously due to the lack of real competition with Tamiya's kit out there. Trumpeter is hot on Academy's heels. They announced last year though that they're putting out a CV5 and CV6. Now CV5, they've now released sprue shots. Um, they've released box art. It's happening. Uh, I've talked to folks at Free Time Hobbies. They say it's happening next month. There's no word yet on Academy's CV6, but with luck, it'll be of similar quality to their CV5. My other real gripe is that all of these Enterprise kits are of her in her 1942 fit. Um, well, if you watch my Yorktown class review from two or three years ago, the Tamiya Enterprise is actually a hypothetical fit with guns and an island shape uh, and an air wing that never coexisted at the same time. So it's, it's a what if. But this is Enterprise in 1942, very specific periods in 1942. Um, and again, you have to watch that. And I'll try to put in the comments a quick blurb about what you need to do to build the ship in her late 41, early 42, or mid 42 configuration. You can't build her before um, 1939 because the island had um, features that are not included on this. So you're looking at late 39, late 41, early 42, mid 42. That's all you got. But, I mean, it's a good kit, and I'm looking forward to building it. I'm going to wait a little bit to see if there's any more aftermarket that comes out, if there's a detailed photo etch set designed just for this kit, or if we're still going to use the Tom's generic Yorktown class. I'm also going to wait to see if there's a, a flight deck that comes out for it in wood. And if I can't wait, I'll just build it out of the box and then buy another one, because, again, this is a pretty cheap kit. It's like $32 at Free Time Hobbies. Um, probably it's comparable price elsewhere. I know I plug free time a lot. I don't work for them. I just buy a lot of stuff from them. And like me, they're from Georgia and got to stick together. All right, so sound off. What do you think? Is this kit going to be in your stash soon? Is it already in your stash? Are you building it? I'd love to see some shots. Uh, put them on the Museum Modeler Facebook page. Um, put them on the Museum Modeler blog. I just posted a lengthy blog post about... Uh, doing a war-damaged USS Franklin CV-13. So if you haven't read that yet, uh, go over, check it out, and you can see how I tore up uh, the Trumpeter Franklin using photo etch and lots of patience. <laughs> Enterprise, though, she's in one piece. So thanks for watching this, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this review. I've been waiting for it as long as I have. Let's go out and build some ships.